In the notes that you'll see today, you'll notice that there are some branching diagrams. And I wanted to go through and explain what those branching diagrams were all about so that when I put one in the notes in the future, it'll probably be a little more easier to understand. Um, the one that I'm going to go through is specifically the one in note four, because that's the one that's a little bit more complicated. The author of your textbook gives you all of these words and he gives you definitions for all of them, but he doesn't really explain that all of the words that he gives you are really very much interrelated. And that's what this diagram is trying to show you. So at the top of the diagram, we have the word organisms. And this is all living organisms. It's every single organism, um, whether it's a plant, whether it's an animal, whether it's a mushroom, whether it's a shark, whether it's a tree, no matter what it is, all organisms are gonna fall, anything that's alive is gonna fall on this diagram someplace. Now, organisms are gonna fall into two separate categories. Organisms can either be autotrophs, which you remember from your reading means it's an organism that can make its own food, produce its own food, or they're gonna be heterotrophs. And heterotrophs are organisms that rely on something else, an outside source to get their food. So you, for an example, are a heterotroph because you can't produce your own food. You have to eat food that is either coming from plants or coming from animals. The only types of autotrophs are actually called producers. There's no other classification for them. And we know these as plants. Plants are green, they have chlorophyll in them, they, go, they do photosynthesis, and so producers are gonna make their own food. Heterotrophs, however, are gonna come in two separate categories. Heterotrophs are either gonna be consumers, which is what the vast majority of animals are, um, any animal that's going to eat something else. And consumers then can be broken down into three more categories. So a consumer is either going to be an herbivore. An herbivore is something that eats only plants. So you're gonna think of things like cows um, that are gonna eat only grass. You're gonna think of things like uh, giraffes or deer. Um, things that, that graze and don't eat anything but, but plant material. The second category there is a carnivore. And carnivores eat only meat. So in that category, you may think of something like a tiger who um, usually does not eat plants but is going to eat other animals. And then the third category is an omnivore. And an omnivore is a creature that eats both plants and other animals. So if you think about that, obviously the category that people fall into is omnivores. We eat plants and we eat animal products, unless you're a vegetarian, I suppose. Um, the other category that you can be in if you are a heterotroph, besides a consumer, is that you can be a decomposer. And a decomposer is perhaps not um, what we normally think of as most exciting creatures, but if they weren't available, as your textbook tells you, um, we would have so much waste material, so many dead creatures laying around that we would be we would be buried in them. So we will discuss decomposers later on in the class, but know that they are crucial for the way that the whole ecosystem is going to work together and keep things um, all in balance. The other thing that I wanted to mention in this particular note is that the vocabulary words that you're getting are gonna be absolutely crucial to your understanding of biology. And so I wanted to explain the method that I mentioned. You don't have to use this method. It's just one that one of my kids um, developed for herself and has found to be very useful. What she does is she takes two index cards. And so here she's got the word herbivores written on the front of both cards. On the back of one card, she's got the definition of an herbivore written. On the back of the other card, she has nothing. So as you can see here, I have definitions for herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. And so when she studies, what she's going to do is she'll have her definitions laid out on one side. If I can hold them in three fingers, we'll see how well this works. So she's gonna hold them up, or she'll lay them out on the table so she can see all three definitions. 
And then she'll take the card that's blank on the other side and she'll say, okay, herbivores, which one does herbivores go with? And so here, herbivores are organisms that eat only plants, which is the card on the top. So she'll lay these two next to each other. Then which after she's matched all of her cards up, then she can check them. And so she'll say, well, if this one is herbivores, then when I turn this card over, it should say herbivores and the two of them should match. So that's just, it's one kind of sort of a quiz game that you can play with your cards. If you have found other ways to learn vocabulary words that works better for you, that's fine. Do whatever works for you. But the one thing you do want to make sure you do is review your, your vocabulary words every day. Um, I mentioned in the introductory video, biology has a lot of vocabulary words. And if you don't know the vocabulary words, you're not going to be able to understand the concepts. So your vocabulary cards are cards that you should review every single day to make sure that you have those, those words down.